Howdy, AP Pregal. It is Ms. Kosh. Um, so this is kind of the third day in my room of, for graphing trig functions. And so the very first day, we defined what it meant to be periodic, and then we graphed the parent functions of sine and cosine, and we used spaghetti. Um, then the second day, we used sine and cosine to help us graph secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent. So we've graphed now all six parent functions. And so now here comes day three, and we're on the block schedule. So we've had, we've already had, what is that, 180 minutes? We've already had three hours on graphing trig. Um, and so now we're gonna start looking at the transformations. Um, IB puts that in 3, 6, 3, 8, and 3, 11. Um, but I had to do what makes sense to me. So, um, so we're going to start by, okay, so what we'll do with all these transformations, and they're using sine and cosine, um, because section 3.6 hasn't introduced secant, cosecant, and cotangent, and tangent. Anyway, the other four they haven't introduced yet. So basically what happens, but we can do all these transformations for all the different graphs. Um, one thing that's a little bit different, and I remember at our AP Summer Institute, um, we, we got into big discussion about, oh my goodness, we're used to, what we have always said in the past would be like, well, and I didn't use theta, to be honest with you. I would say f of x is equal to a, and then I would write, um, okay, well, whatever my trig function was, um, Sometimes I would just write G of, okay, anyway, let's do, let's do sine of, and then I would do B, and then I would open another parenthesis, and I would say X minus C plus D. And so we would always talk about, well, this is a shift to the right C units. Well, then everything we saw from AP has this as a plus C, so it's actually now a shift left C units. Um, so just make make the transition. If you're used to seeing a minus sign here, sorry, I don't know why AP wanted to do this, and we started arguing, and I'm like, everybody's fine, just just say what's happening. This is going to move you. Like, if I have, if I have um, f of x is equal to sine of uh, theta, oh, I can't mix them. My bad. Let's call it, I'm trying to the notes that I've seen have a lot of theta there, um, minus pi over 2. Well, what is, what's my, trans, my transformation? I have moved it to the right pi over 2 okay, I don't really care what C is. What I care about is that I've moved it to the right pi over 2. Okay, um, and so the first thing that, anyway, I digress. <laughs> that may have all been unnecessary, but it's fine. We're going to work through everything else. So this first one, that they're talking about an additive transformation of sine of theta plus D or cosine theta plus D or any of the other parent functions plus D. It's just that at this point in AP's curriculum, they've only introduced the first two. Um, so where they're going to say take sine of theta plus 2, so what I need to do, I think this is 1 here, so everybody moves up 2, so here moves to here, this point goes up 2, this point goes up 1, 2, this point goes up here, this point went up 2, and we're taking this graph and we're curving this out and doing something like that. I'm too lazy to do the whole thing, but we're fine. What happened? We shift up to write the equation of the midline. Well, the midline had been here at y equals 0, and now it moved up 2, so it's at y equals 2. If I gave you a problem like this, you should say thank you, Ms. Kosh, because I usually don't make them that easy. Um, I'm not a nice person. Okay, the next one, now we're going to talk about a phase shift. So we're going to shift left to right with a phase shift. Um, so on this one, we are now moving to the right, um, pi over 4. So whatever was here now moves to the right, pi over 4. And so this one, so this point moves to the right pi over 4, this point moves to the right pi over 4, this point moves to the right pi over 4. And so, okay, I'll do one more. You need one more? I think we need more. One more. Anybody know my movie, movie quote? Comment below if you know my movie quote. Um, and it looks something like this, because this has taken our graph and, and shifted our parent function to the right pi over 4. Describe, so it went right pi over 4. Super. Um, okay, then we can do a multiplicative transformation. That's fun to say. Um, basically, we have a times sine theta or a times cosine theta, or later we'll see a times the other trig functions. And it's a vertical dilation um, by the factor of the absolute value of a. Um, so what I like to remember is just the, that the amplitude is now absolute value of a. Um, okay, so sketch the graph of 3 cosine theta. So what was at 1 now goes up to 3 to here, what was at negative one now goes, this is negative one, negative two, negative three. But what's at zero stays? 
So it did not change our period. Um, where are we? Oh, hang on. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I graphed more of this one, I guess. And it's doing something like this. Oop. Ish. Okay. Um, but make sure they're not straight lines. I think I talked about that. Well, and this should be concave down, and then it turns and it's concave up. My graph looks a little funny there, but you're fine. Uh, describe. So it's a vertical dilation of three. Find the amplitude. It's three. That's that problem. That was fun. Okay. Continuing on. We can also have um, this B value here, and this is a, gonna change our um, a horizontal dilation. And so it's um, a hor dilation, horizontal dilation of the graph of sine or cosine, and actually the other ones also, we just don't know them yet officially, by a factor of one over B, or the absolute value of one over B. To be honest with you, I, in all the years I've taught pre-cal, I have never made the B value negative. Um, who knows what AP is gonna do, but I, I would be surprised. Well, I don't know that. It would, it would be something I would have to learn, how about we say that, if they make the B value negative, but okay. And so the period is changed by a factor of one over B. What I like to point out is that that means our new period is equal to the parent function period over B. So what we would typically say with, um, with sine, with cosine, and there's two others that have a parent function period of two pi. Um, if you don't know what those are yet, go back and watch my graphing from sine and cosine videos. But it's... Um, it's cosecant and secant. Those, those four parent functions, um, their, their period, the parent function period is 2 pi, so the new period will always be 2 pi over b. Tangent and, and cotangent, however, have a period of, their parent function has a period of pi, so their new period would be pi over b. Okay, so... Um, sketch the graph of this one. So now what it's done is it's um, described the horizontal dila dilation. It's got a dilation by one half. So instead of getting here, it's going to get there sooner. So this is the period to there. So it's going to do everything by in half that amount of time. So where are we? This is weird. I'm not used to graphing them together. Okay, so that, and then we go back to zero, and we go back to here. So it's going to do, am I right? Well, we're about to find out. Oh. Concave up, concave down, concave up, concave down, and something like that. Is that right? Um, it returned by, yeah, I think so. Let's see. Okay, and then we would go here, and then here, and then back here, and back here. Okay, so I should have done one, two periods in what we had done. So, okay, yes, I am right. <laughs> that was more an eyesight problem than it was a math problem. Um, but we, because our period is, um, well, finally our period is now 2 pi over 2, which is equal to pi. So it's going to do everything it needs to do by pi, which was half of where we had been before. Um, the other way to think about it is when in 2 pi, what we had before, we, we get to do the cycle twice in that same amount of time. Um, yeah, something like that. Okay, let's do, actually, let's come back for the next video. Good luck. We'll see you soon.